fear the Lord and praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hate hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. For you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him indeed shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord, and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done. Our second scripture this morning comes from the book of Genesis, the 17th chapter, verses 1 through 7 and 15 and 16. This is um, the relationship of Abram and Sari and God and the covenant. This is actually the third covenant um, God is making with Abram and Sari. The first one being before he left to go on the journey um, that God has provided. The second one is somewhere in the midst. The covenants are all the same. Um, this one, interestingly enough, um, has, has um, the fulfillment attached to it. So listen now for God's word to you coming from the common English Bible. When Abram was 99 years old, and the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am El Shaddai. Walk with me. Be trustworthy. I will make a covenant between us, and I will give you many, many descendants. Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, But me, my covenant is with yours. You will be an ancestor of many nations. And because I have made you the ancestor of many nations, your name will no longer be Abram, but Abraham. I will make you very fertile. I will produce nations from you, and kings will come from you. I will set upon you my covenant with you and your descendants after you in every generation, as I have an enduring covenant. I will be with your God and your descendants. I will be your God and your descendants' God after you. God said to Abraham, As for your wife, Sari, you will no longer call her Sari. You will be called Sarah. I will bless her and even give you a son from her. I will bless her so that she will become nations and kings of people will come from her. The word of God is among us. This is the word of God for the people of God.
This morning's passage is from our psalmist says, As for me, I will live for the Lord. And I love that passage, and I think it reminds us of who we are. And it simply then changes us into God's people. Call to bring wholeness to the lives of others, generation to generation. Have you thought about what you want to pass on to your children, grandchildren, nieces, and nephews? What will you give future generations? I have a special spot on my bookshelf for books that my grandparents have handed me down over the years. I have my great-grandmother's confirmation Bible. I treasure my grandfather's old Bible and hymnal and book of common worship out of the United Methodist Church where he was a pastor. Depending on your family history, most of you have at least a few of those old treasures that have been passed down from generations before. For some, it's a really special care that happens that a wedding ring is passed down or a chess set or old pictures. Other items I think we've passed without much planning and less care. I have my mother's old cookie jar with the wooden wood replacement that was made at some point in time, I guess when the original was probably cracked. It's cheap, it's gaudy red, but it holds amazing memories of the cookies my mom made and my children ate at Grammy's house. This week's Old Testament passage begins with a man. A man not expecting to have any more children. Abram was 86 when his son Ishmael was born to Hagar, the handmaiden or concubine to his wife, Sari. 24 years have passed since God first called to him and they set out from Haram. By the time we reach the 17th chapter, Abram is 99 years old, and his wife, Sari, is 90. And of course, the idea of them having children together is so preposterous that Abram actually laughs out loud. Actually, our translation says he falls to the ground because he's laughing so loud about the suggestion. Yet God is certain. You see, God made a covenant with Abram. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. And this covenant that God makes isn't like any other covenant. It's a special covenant. And we see that in our scripture this morning when God changes Abraham's name. And when God changes Sari's name. In fact, God also claims a new name of sorts. It's the first time that God refers to himself as El Shaddai, God Almighty, in the scriptures. This new name marks God's covenant with Abraham and Sarah. They have been blessed. And their names, their names remain, remind them that they are destined to be God's chosen beloved forever. Now, this is not to say that Abraham and Sarah were perfect people. Far from it. Even so, God uses them for God's divine purpose. God does that throughout Scripture. Using others that people see as too old or too stubborn or too broken, 
But God sees just as ones that God loves and then blesses them. So God's covenant with Abraham and Sarah is true and without conditions, making it clear that this is an ongoing relationship for generations to come. The Lord will make Abraham, Sarah, and the generations to come exceedingly numerous, it says, the ancestors of a multitude of nations, extremely fruitful, and kings shall come from that line. In a sum, the God Almighty establishes a covenant for all time to all their offspring through the generations. And folks, that means us. You see, Abraham and Sarah are our great, 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 continue on, grandparents. Our lineage comes from them and this particular covenant. So this Lenten season at church, we've been talking about and exploring ways to create space for God to be present in our lives. I think it's interesting study to see Abraham and Sarah, to see them faithfully follow God and create space. They opened themselves up for a relationship with God. And in that relationship and creating the space, God covenants with them and gives them a blessing an ongoing blessing, the blessing that we inherit. That's what we inherit from them. And the blessing then continues beyond ourselves, beyond those currently sitting here, but to future generations as well. And God's blessings always call for us to respond faithfully. How do we do that? Well, in several ways. One, for this particular community, we respond with our financial resources. We're called to care not only for the people in this congregation, but the people outside this congregation. And we give faithfully to that. We are, respond with the love of a faith community. And we're called to welcome all in God's name. And we're called to care for this gift of creation that God has provided. And we're called to be stewards of the creation for generations to come. And we come to this table. This table which reminds us that we are changed into God's people simply becoming to have a meal here. To remember the blessings that began with Abraham and Sarah, but that we will pass from generation to generation. Amen.